Brother Wayne Markham and Jesus up to me. so I couldn't see it. And there's a certain sister said, Brother Markham, for seven days in a row, put oil on your eyes. I did for seven days and I didn't see any change. And I thought, well, what's, what's wrong with that? And I went bald in the Bible. Well, you don't sit with me today. I, I finally kept looking over the Bible. I had to turn in front of me. It's my favorite Bible. And I kept looking over front of it. And I thought, well, I'm going to pick it up. I picked it up for tonight. I started picking it up. I can see the words good. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Seven days, it wasn't exactly your mom in color. Because you said, if it's red, I want to see red. I don't want to see shades of pink. That may be a fault of mine. But I thank God for it today. Like I said, this is a Bible that I scribbled in, and important things to me is in this book. It's in all of them. But this one here just got markers and things in it that's different that, that I really like today. You know, and I... I want to start out in Isaiah, and I'm going to read, basically go forward and then backwards. I'm going to start chapter chapter 51. The heading on my Bible says, The faithful is called to courage. Boy, do we ever need that this day and time. Everybody's heart's failed and scared to death <laughs> uh, at the end times. Everybody there? And hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord. Look unto the rock which ye are hewn, Amen. and to the hole of the pit which ye are digged. You can be seated. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Praise Amen. Him. I'm going I'm to read here a little bit out of chapter 50 here. And, what a, and I'll give you the title of here, man. It's right in this. He said, Thus saith the Lord, where is the bill of your mother's divorcement? That the bill of your mother's divorcement, you use that as a title. Amen. This, this is in the flesh. Sherry's sure talking about Judah and Israel when they went back on God. Bless you know, they reneged on their promise to him. What they, did. they went back. Bless him, Lord. He says, Thus saith the Lord, where is the bill of your mother's divorcement, whom I have put away, or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Behold, for your iniquities have you sold yourselves, and for your transgressions is your mother put away. Wherefore, when I came, was there no man? When I called, was there none to answer? Is my hand short at all that it cannot be redeemed? Or have I no power to deliver? Behold, at my rebuke I dry up the sea, I make the rivers a wilderness, their fish stinketh because there is no water, and die for thirst. I clothe the heavens with blackness, and I make sackcloth their covering. The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He waketh morning by morning. He waketh mine ear to hear as a learn. The Lord God hath opened mine ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. I gave my back to the smitten, to the smithers, and my cheeks to them that plucked up the hair. I hid my face from shame and spitting. For the Lord God will keep, help me, therefore shall I not be... Confounded, therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. Amen. That's what I want to talk about today. What has happened to the church world? And I want it on today, and this is what it gives to me. I preach on sin anyhow. That's, what takes you to hell? Yeah. Sin. 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 Amen. What takes you to hell? Sin. Amen. What causes it? What church are you in? Where do you gather? He speaks of the mother there. I'm going to look at spiritual terms. The church is the mother. Uh, we know that the Lord is the bride and we are the bride made. We know that to serve him, we know that we have to be born again. The blood has to be applied. We have to be baptized of the water and of the spirit. Uh, that leader and guides us into all righteousness. That's what it does today. Well, what happened to the church world today? What have we done? Why do we get the situation and where we are today? What happened? Come on. Who gave you your bill? God didn't do it. He didn't say, I don't want you. You're not my bride anymore. He didn't say that. What, you, what happened to you? Come on. Did, I, 
it, did my creditors or somewhere another die yet? What happened? Come on. Yeah. Puzzling Come on. today, and a lot of people's puzzles today. Because on that corner they preach one thing. On this other corner they preach something else. On the north and south end, the east and the west, it all encompasses different kinds of relationship with God, they say today. But they have the one and his name is Jesus. Amen. You can have all kinds of gods. You can worship your TV set if you want to. You can worship your old car. You can bow your lawn on church night. The neighbors can come over and sis we're talking about and stay extra time to keep you out of the house of God. I'm a little older too. I ain't learned those things because guess what? I have had Satan to set up in my home the same way. And not only that, they were kin people, but people I truly loved. God sent them right there. And see, they knew I was going to church. I would rest up. But they would just blame her on. You know, sometimes people will try you. Are you real or are you memory? Since years ago, there's a woman was saying, oh, if it's drugs, you know the commercial. And they'd use that memory on a tape to see if you could tell which was real, that they could sell their product. But that's what people are doing to the church today. I'm talking about the born-again Christian, the sanctified Christian that's set apart, Holy Ghost filled, that builds a pulpit, that sings the songs of Zion, that raise up their voices today. What is holding them back? Come on, bless him, Lord. Come on. Family, they're in the world. Children, grandchildren, they're in the world. I know how many times I've sat back and seen preachers dodge questions. I've seen preachers get up and whoop a child, and he had to look at the wife to see how she reacted to it. God's head of man, and man's his head of the woman. Man. That's not in a cruel way, but a biblical way. Right. It was really meant for the woman not to be in the workplace. It was her place to sit home and carry out God's will in His commandments and statutes. Taught by what? The husband of the home. Right. Who called him was Jesus. But we got away from all that. We got all these worldly things anymore. We got Facebooks and all kinds of games and stuff. I got a son that's tied up in that job. He's tied up, sir. You can hardly talk to him. I just got him in and I got an appointment. Well, you got an appointment. I he's on there talking with somebody else, playing games. Ain't a competition on that stuff. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. What happened? Why is it today the church is there? Because the preachers, you know, they got a spine, but there's no marrow in it. <laughs> Everyone try to win both their bend. Or bend for this and bend for that. And I don't want to upset this and I don't want to upset that. Bless you. Well, what happened? What happened then when it comes down to a death or some outrageous tragedy happens? Did you call on me and there's no answer? And they'll tell you that. I pray that God didn't do nothing. Brother, Brother Billy over, Sister Joy, whatever. I pray for her and this happened, that happened. Well, what happened? How come? Is that a tradition that's been happening with you? Is that a trademark that you just pray and nothing's going to happen? But you got to have something to pray for. Where's your bill of deportment? Things are really here. That's what the Lord's talking about. Transgressions. Yeah. A sinner's a sinner. He's not a transgressor. You've got to be saved first. You've got to know who Jesus is first. Oh, then you, when you start backtracking and get into things you shouldn't get into, guess what? Oh, that week could you look in. Why, you can't pray to God in truth. Why? Because you're hanging back that. You reckon he knows it. That little word slipped out the other day. I, I didn't ask for forgiveness. By the way, no really bad words should slip out. Amen. None. Amen. Curse word better not come out. That's not a slip. That means you never got took care of. When you went down the water, you went down a dry one and got up a wet one because something was wrong there. You sure didn't have the conviction I did. Guess what? Yeah, I'm going to brag on Wayne a little bit. When I got saved, he took the cursing away from me. I wasn't bad, but I was a nut. It's not how bad you are. If you use them, you just, you're a user. It's just the way it is. Hate a number of times, but it changed me. So I don't have to have somebody to tell me what it takes. I had it down inside of me that delivered me. And when your prayers are not answered, we can question Not every prayer means that you're wicked or done something wrong. God has a will, a purpose for all things. We don't always understand it, but he's got a will. Amen. He said he knows it. You know, hours of your head is nothing. Your days are nothing. He knows all. We, why does he die young? It was God's will. Amen. God knows all things. We can't question God. But you know what? I've learned checks and balances. 
and they kind of mention bounces in the Bible. You need to equal with God. You need balance. God's way of left to right to right down the middle. I think it talks about a plow. And so far in the Bible, there is a man plowed. And he plowed that field straight. Straight and narrow. Because if you don't, it messes up the rest of your garden. There's going to be a bend out there. And that old horse or mule or that tractor ain't going to cut that way. Wide enough for it good. You're going to have a crooked field. You're going to hurt your garden production. You're not going to have the grain you could have. You ain't got nothing to cut corners out there and feed the poor. Or the widow woman or the widow man or whoever it is that you need. You don't have that because you cut corners. So when your prior comes down to it, you had a divorce there. But it wasn't God that divorced you. You was one done the deed that separated you from him. And that's what people don't want to accept today. They'll look around. I, like I said, I see some preacher preachers get up and this church priest they start to get a little strict and you can see the anointing moving toward you to read and follow in the Bible. And when they get to a certain part that picks a wife, first thing you know, they'll look over like that and they'll break it off. They'll stop right there. Amen. Not picking on women tonight now. But I'm going to tell you something other. Men could be the head, but a lot of women's got the neck that turns it, as the old saying goes. And you don't need that today. Amen. I want to read a little bit over here. Over here in chapter, and I want to go to Jeremiah. Here in chapter 3. I'm going to skip down to verse 8. There's a lot of our. All right, now I'm me read this to you. Just go to war. Look too good to pass up. <laughs> Amen. Jeremiah chapter 3, start at 1. This where Judah turns from the Lord. This, now, this is, I know this is back in the Bible, the old Bible day, but this is the same thing spiritually that happens today. Mm -hmm. This physical part, we're in a New Testament spiritual part of it. He said, they say if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers, yet returned again to me, saith the Lord. The Lord is speaking to the church today. Things are not getting accomplished because you've been with many harlots. That means many sins you've partaken of. Exactly what it means. It don't necessarily mean an evil woman or a man out here. It means a thing that you took out of the church. You let your family keep you from missing church. And sis we're talking about. We learn from those things, but we correct those things. That's one thing that's out of the way. If you got another and he shows up his ugly head that keeps you out of the house of God or worship God, you take care of it, you move it over to the west side. Put it over where the ghosts are at and forget about it. But God, God wants sheep as pure and white. It's gonna stand before him. There's not gonna be anything up there. No ghosts in heaven. Ain't gonna be none of them. He's gonna be the separator today. And people look around, oh well, this goes on and that. But you're not enough plain looking at him and tell him, you need to make a change. Are you head of your household? When you got kids under you, do they mind? Come on. Do they talk over top of grown ups? No. Come on. I was blessed, I would talk at home. You know what dad looked at us and told us? When we're talking to adults, you be quiet. Amen. You to be seen and not heard. We talk manners. People get in the room. Marriage is good Bible stuff. Amen. Good plot marriage, good Bible stuff. Uh -huh. Go on. Good Bible stuff. And I was taught that, but the word also teaches that. Be diligent in this walk with God. That's right. Be diligent. <laughs> Investigate every circumstance that you're involved in. Mm -hmm. Look to the left or right. You know, you can look in front of it sometime, but if you get over here, if you stay there a little bit, you're hitting the mud at all. Mm -hmm. Oh, your shoes are dirty. <laughs> oh, you got to be cleaned up. The only wife's going to get all that again. But you know what? If you got a Christian holding up your wife, but not only that, the Lord's already condemned you. And, and she's seen you do that, and it, it hurts you in her eyes sometimes. And we all fail. There's nothing wrong with failing or falling, but you got to get back up. Amen. And that's why a lot of times, they, if you looked at your spouse or other one time or another, and you done something that was plumb off center, I'm not talking about being cursed words, done something just went quiet prayer. Maybe you had, a, like I talk about a lot, a bad word toward the better half. She actually said, uh, won't you come here? And you didn't hear her the first time. She actually didn't. You go, what do you want? <laughs> Just scared up to death. And then you kind of felt about this high because you was a Christian man and woman. You are supposed to be God. Man. I don't see whenever God raised your voice at anybody. He talked politely even when he was sitting in Pilate Hall. Well, the one that's questioning you, king of the Jews. He basically said, you say, you say that, don't you? Is that what you say? I'm proud of you. That's what he said. He didn't admit to nothing. 
because he was God, because he had to come and what he had to pay a price right. that we could have life and have it more abundantly. Right. There is no hope for us Gentile people but one pen. Mm -hmm. And I can't believe that old brother Paul either. He was a preacher to the Gentiles. Right. But I'm telling you today, we need to straighten up. We need to make a change of what we do. Amen. Amen. Play in the heart says, to should lift up thine eyes into the high places to see where thou hast not been laying with in the way that thou set for them as the Arabian in the wilderness. And thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. Boy, do I sound like today? Do I sound like the time we're living in now? Uh -huh. Everything is all right. You watch the news, whatever you watch, it's upside down. This woke generation, all this junk that's going on, it don't bother me because they're really going to get woke one of these days. And right. Sister Pam, they're going to be some Easter skies going apart. Right. And boy, yeah. you, you better make sure that your number is right. Yeah. I'm telling you that it all seems to run in the blood. It ain't time, wait a minute, Lord. Don't take that next step because you're in trouble. If you preach that today, they said he's trying to have a scared religion. Well, I preach it all if I, if I keep you out of hell. Amen. I'd scare you to death. Well, I don't know where to do that. How come they don't stand up? Paul preached it, did Peter did too. Preached the Holy Ghost. He was instant in season. And he never got out of season either. Once the Holy Ghost moved up on him, he never got out of season. He kept to the promise. He preached Jesus, did he? didn't back up on it. And I'm not beating people to death today, but we've got people in the house that's throwing a reproach against now. I'm not talking about here, but in God's business out here of doing his work, that those are reproach against the Jesus people. You see a lot of them in Walmart. It's not only the dress, it's the talk and the company they keep. You know, I can't go just anywhere with anybody. You know why? I'm judged by people I'm around, even if it's falsely. I go into Sarah home and I pray for them to be saved, but I can't take my boat there, see me down there every night, my car parked there. Sooner or later, bad thoughts will happen. We don't want to go to him. Brother Mark made very good. We know these people are great. He's down there quite often. Nothing wrong with telling you need to make a change. That's, and that's if you got acquaintance with somebody or you're led to go to somebody. Go to them by all means. But you can put yourself in predicaments that makes the church look bad, especially holding people. Why today the country's in shape? Because they turn from God. They're the great whore. That's who they're serving today. That's who they turn to. They want to get God out of everything. And I'm telling you, as far as the world goes, it's coming to it. It's coming to that. Politically, you see it coming now. Yeah. Yeah. You see it coming now. It's on its way. Yeah, it if you ain't scared, you ought to be. If you ain't prayed up, let's get there. Let's keep moving. Let's stand. Let's not back up them whatsoever. Because the end's not going to be good. And I want to get a little bit, and I want to scratch some. Over here, Matthew. Everybody preaching the note about Bible. reading chapter 24. I'll tell you what's coming down to it. You want to go. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his sons came to him for to show him the building of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye all, see ye not all these things. Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Mount of Olives with the sons came to him proudly and said, This is a point. This is where we're at today. We're closer today than you realize. But I can't emphasize how close we are to eternity, to the end of time. It's coming. It's Oh, it's on the way. I tell you, I feel it in my bones, my Amen. spirit. He said, the man of all the disciples came unto him privately and said, tell us, when shall these things be? What shall we be the sign of thy coming at the end of the world? And this tells it all. We say it all along. And I preach it, I preach it up since I was a little boy. But guess what? We're in the 21st century now, and it's closer now than ever. You can see the handwriting practically on the wall. Yeah. Go dead away. It's on the wall. And God's people can see it today. Not only can you see it, you can feel it. And when you get into these big cities, I'm telling you, you can almost feel the pressure of, of sin and wickedness in the oh, airwaves. I'm telling you. I said that a few years ago. I was driving up to, I believe it was, well, I hadn't been saved very long. I said, if you was from evil, we going to hell with mom's house. Now to her mother laws After her picking tent. And I think I mentioned to her at that time, I said, you can only feel evil in these places. Because yes. I was raised up in a country environment. You know, I was raised up in a time where people went to church. I was raised up in time when the sinners looked better than most of the Christians do today. Yes. Amen. I know that's hard to take, but that's just the way it is. Right. Because you were raised up and you were respected in a home today. The home life was done left. The men have put on dresses anymore, and they step down, and the wife is running the, running the hood in the company. I know that 
tell them I'm not picking on women either. But men have got weak anymore. You look at them. Look at them. You can see them, you can see them on TV. You can see them a lot of places. I love my wife. But you know what? I, I am boss. Not in a mean way. I am boss at that. My say goes. Because I'm head of this house. God is head of me. I'm in line with him. If I make a mistake and I put it on the wife, i got to look at her and say, I was wrong. I apologize. Dear, forgive me. And i got to make it right. Amen. People think, well, you go through that and you hurt one another. It's okay. It's right. It's over. No, it's not. Feelings leave scars. Amen. You need to carry them as fast as you can. Brother, no, Dad, I see some of it, son. Oh, I got it. I got it. I understand it, Dan. I've been guilty of that. More than I'd like to admit, to be honest with you. It's hard to not point situations out that, that you know is wrong, but it's not your place to do it because God's going to take care of that. I learned to keep this big mouth shut, quit being so blunt and straight, but I still stand on the truth. If you ask me, you'll get all you want. Uh, and probably a little more because I love you. I'm not going to back down and tell you, honey, it's all right. Not going to hug your neck, pat you on the back and say, go on. Go down there. It won't hurt you drink a beer every now and then. It don't hurt. Strong drink. Well, I don't believe. It's under holding the church. I believe you can drink a little bit. It's not a problem. Well, I'd like, I'd like to see on major a couple of little bitties. I missed it somewhere. <laughs> hey, man, I, I missed that. But this is where we're getting in nitty gritty here, and this is what they're coming down to. It's a little late, and this comes up on you. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name. What you're talking about, say, I am Christ, and shall deceive me. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of war. See that ye be not troubled. Why should you be not troubled? If you got Jesus anchored down in your body, down in your life, in your heart and soul. If you're married to him like you should, if you hadn't filed for that divorce through your discretions and your transgressions, he's there and you shouldn't be panicked and scared to death. Amen. One of the worst Amen. I ever felt when COVID come on me. Let me tell you, sometimes you think you're right where you should be and you're moving on, take the next step. I got scared. I panicked a little bit. Not a lot. What is Tracy and Helen going to do if something happens to me? Shame on my Shame on Wayne. Boy, I felt it too. No one had to shame on Wayne. I, I testified this before. But I will tell you something. I knew it right to you. Pastor didn't have to tell me. Nobody else had to tell me. I had to get testified about it. Don't let the world scare you up. My Redeemer and yours still is if you're anchored in Jesus today. If you know who your daddy is, I say that a lot. A lot of people don't know who their daddy is. But I know who they are. But I say you know them by their fruits. If they got these old dirty, nasty fruits out here, Lucifer's their daddy. If they got holy rats in the bottom, when you see them, they got a smile on their face. You know, I don't get discouraged. I didn't smile. I hug everybody. I'm a hugger, but I truly love them. Because when I was young and out in the world, I didn't care what I'd done. You know, didn't care. I had all kinds of friends. Well, I want to know people that I care that. Yeah. My wife says, give a holy gift. Amen. Yeah, they, they didn't want, you try to hug them, they scared to death. It's cold. He scared me just for a little while, but enough to condemn me. Yeah. The things that condemn me, you got me right. So I, I don't care at the time how right you think you are. You can get in this book a lot of times and correct yourself, and then you're going to feel about it. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why? Because you stepped out of place. Sometimes anger will. Eat. Anger is never, never deserved. It's never deserved. He preaches it all the time. It's true. It's never deserved. How many times I've anger or out of mouth you said something up? You know, if you know I got a problem, why don't you even give me this? Had to repent of it. If it's a problem keeping you down, or I told you to disagree with that word, leave it alone. Pretty sure you leave it alone. Just keep praying for that individual. Well, I don't have a God on that. The Lord did. But the Lord corrects me. A lot of times we don't like to admit to that. We, we like people to think we're smart, really, but we are. Yeah. And sometimes we're dumb as a box of rocks. Don't even realize it. Then it takes Jesus to kind of condemn you. People say, well, that, that what didn't happen to me. Word, well, there's another lie told. It does. It happens to everybody. It's called a growing part of process. When you transgress against God, these little things are transgressions. It don't mean that you absolutely quit, but it's transgression. You have right. He's, he's telling me, who give you, he's telling me, you, you can actually come to me. We're talking about building a divorce. Who gave you that? He didn't give it to you. You divorced him. Amen. 
Amen. You called on the transgression. Yeah. That's what you did, wasn't him? You called on transgression. Why you say it? Who gave you that field of voice? Somebody said it to my creditor or somebody? Who, who, who got you? What happened to you? Bless him, Lord. Who was? Lord. It was you. Uh -huh. It was you. It right. was me. When we do that. When prayers are not answered, there's always a reason. And you don't always have to do something of it. Go. Jesus said, have a mind in you is also Christ in you. We can have a mind in him, but sometimes our mind slips. We're still not there yet. We're still in the building process. We're still growing. You can plant a seed, and after a while, it, it'll grow up, it'll flourish. If you till the soil right, if you take water, right there, you've got sunshine, then it's going to grow up everywhere, and it's going to produce fruit, good fruit. You don't take care of it, after a while, it's going to get up and wilt away. It's going to be all cobbled, a little bit of hair on that corn cob, hanging down a little silk, and that's about all you got. Nothing left to between your teeth. Same way with God. You hit people, produce good fruit. That's why he was telling them, who made you do all this stuff? Turn that great heart. That's why he said, so what, what made you do all that? For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. That's in seven we're talking about. Earthquakes, all these insects. I about cracked up there. I had a flash across the news there from oh, that summit. Joe Biden's in there. A locust flew and hit him inside the head right there. And he knocked it off. I thought he was going to have a spasm. He thought it ate him up. You know locusts don't, don't eat you up or anything like that. I was, I was, maybe I should. I had an uncle. He was Catholic, and I was what, 14, 15 years old. He was at my grandmother's house. We lived up from, and uh, like I said he was Italian, didn't know a whole lot about West Virginia, this, that, and that. It was over, actually, over on Ferguson. And I called a big jar fly. You know, they're big flies before they turn into just that shell. Caught him, you know, hit him with my hands. He just made an awful noise. And I had a cow tied out down there. They'd have a pasture, some grass, a long time to time up where there's a lot of grass. And a cow tied up, and he come up there, and, I, and he'd heard rattlesnakes against him. And I had that man, I said, Come here, God, don't you look at this. It was mean to me, I was just a child. Shouldn't have done it. And he's a grown man. Lord, he broke the run, he ran all the way to Grandma. I went by here, friend, I, I sent him, and I left him aside her. But it was a godly little thing to do, you know what I'm saying? But people don't know anymore, they don't understand. And people weren't raised up. A lot of people weren't raised up in the culture I was. I was. Best thing ever happened to me is be raised poor. Amen. When you're raised poor, you don't have great expectations. Yeah, that's right. You're worried about the next week on a pair of shoes you got. Yeah. You got a pair of pants with it. I was raised poor. My dad was sick from the <coughs> time he was little. He had tuberculosis, y'all know that. He stayed in San for five years. My mom had no skills. Back then, life was hard. We about started time. We didn't have enough land. What didn't have the biggest church house here. Now ain't going to keep you all through the year. That was a long time ago. That back four stamps and stuff when I was just a child. He couldn't go to work. When he, had to work even when he got healed of it. When he go to work, because health department would call. They, they, when they arrived, somebody out of the day, even back then, health department would call. And they cut him off his job. But one thing I learned what prayer was. Well, I'm getting on this, and you heard this again. But it's, it needs to be known. God still answers prayer. He did back then, too. I don't know why. We hear all these meetings back there that happened, this healing stuff right God hasn't changed. Right. He's still the same God, and he's still capable. What's holding us back today? What's stopped us from doing it? Nobody but us. Nobody but us. Amen. It is. Nobody for us. If we would mind our own conscience, you say, you can't be as strict. The Bible said, be your perfect. Your Father have your perfect. I think that's Matthew 5, uh, 548. Be your perfect. Your Father in heaven is perfect. Uh, I'm going to get out there. I get in trouble over that. My family in the room, you can't be perfect. Got last breath, but be perfect. Joe Abraham at night, I walked before we be not perfect. Noah was a perfect man in his time. Remember, he didn't have a script or a Bible to go by. But guess what? He was in prison up here. Amen. <laughs> when he locked the door, nobody could get in after he tells him, hey, it's going to rain. They probably called him old fool and everything in the world. Uh -huh. You know how people are, they anything like you are now. Uh -huh. You know, this said it, but he stood. He said, but we've got to be anchored in this. He said, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. See, I, I don't think we're going to escape all this. People say, well, you know, when rapture's going to come, he's going to take us out of all that. I, I don't understand it. I don't understand everything about this. Stuff. But I think we're going to go through some things. We're going to be tried like we've never been tried. These times are coming right now. It's telling me this. If you have an anchor, if 
if you don't have the Holy Ghost down beautiful, so you'll beat the top of your head. If you solely don't trust in Jesus and everything, you're in trouble. You're going to stumble. Amen. And it may cost your life. It may be a today. We've got to stand regardless of what. I say this. When they're pulling off the toenail, the fingernail, and putting your kids' eyes out your grandbabies, you know, we've got, we've got a real problem today. You know, people today, that a lot of people, I'm not talking about terror and anything like you see out in the world, the grandbabies and children that run over top of the parents. It's they have no correction no more. And why does society help that? You can't paddle in school no more. We raised up a bunch of heathens. And we brought people in from other nations that Islamic and different cultures don't believe in a thing world. And they Good multiply God. like rabbits. And now you're everywhere, all over the place. No. Yeah, I told them years ago before I was ever saved, I said, this country bought me inside out. That's what Nikita Khrushchev said years ago. He said, you know, this bought me inside out. Amen. But all these things he's telling you is coming to pass. These things will come. Amen. That's all he's saying. He said, and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another. That's happening today. Yes. In our own churches, that's happening today. One's against this one. He likes to do that. And the other says anything about it. Go tell them about it. They get all upset to all the pieces and mad about it. It never goes away. But you can't justify stuff over top of sin. It don't work. you got to do the right thing. Go to them. Settle down. Don't batter, don't batter back and forth in anger, but do it in love. Say, hey. If you don't understand, sit very peacefully. Still have God. Don't cast him down because they agree with you. Right. I've went through these things, I know. I've done been a part of it myself. I've been on the bad side of it too. But that's growing. You've got to grow. This stuff is not tall. The old time preachers, a lot of them are gone on. Yeah. Not many hoary heads are left to tell you the truth. Well, I'll tell you just feel good story to get you to come back next week. How good you are. I want to know that what I told you will save your soul. That Jesus looks after a body as pure, without blemish. You know, when you've got to plow that old field, sit that tomato patch, don't you want to be at the fine line? You want to be it right there where it looks pretty from a distance. Just about square or whatever you got done, got all lined and done on this side. We'll take the little lines, we'll put a little stake out there, make sure we got her just right. Amen. Why don't we do that in our life? Amen. Why don't we get in here and drive a stake down and say, oh, wait a minute. Am I lining up with this? Right. God didn't divorce us. He said, who, who gave you that divorce? Mm -hmm. Amen. The mother is the church. Reference in this. It's in the church. What happened? Look what happened to Jerusalem. God, 1948, they become, started coming back to their country. 1948, they become a nation again. They were scattered because of what? Their sins, their transgressions, and iniquities. He scattered them. And even them Jews. The same way. What's happening in the United States today? We're in bad shape. You see, my youngest tell me, Daddy, why are you talking about gloom and doom? Because I want you saved. I want you to know that you can't get out of this world without Jesus. <laughs> you die going to die heaven but you can't get out of this world without Jesus. I don't want to go down. I want to go up. And you know what? When I got saved, I got saved. I say this, I'm going to say it again. A lot of people don't know if they got saved. If you got truly saved, you will know it. You can't buy it at Walmart down the far more. Any drugstore, you can't buy it. You can't rent it off a TV. Ain't nothing you can download. Only thing you can download is from the man of church and his name is Jesus. When you come with a contrite, broken heart, he said, you know, I'll draw nigh to you. But you know what? You've got to draw nigh to him. If he's drawing nigh to you, you're backing up. You ain't going to get anywhere. you got to run. Like today's song I have about a long time ago, I like it. You well, I run, well, Jesus run to me. Well, I tell you, I run to him. When conviction moved up on me, I didn't have to have it from somewhere else. God moved up on me and changed this inner man. Oh, I'm a new creature in Christ. I've seen this awful lately. But people need to understand, I'm not in this old flesh, sick body that I was in, sinful body. I'm still in a flesh, but I'm not in a sin sick body. I'm in a righteous body. Why? Because I try to keep his word. And how do I keep it right? If I have a flaw and make a mistake, I correct it with him. Because he chastises on what he loves. And he loves me because he gets me. He lets me know that you've done wrong. You need to change. Amen. Amen. That's what we need to do. Amen. Don't divorce God. He didn't divorce you. You did him through your iniquities and your sins and your transgressions. That's what he's talking about. What happened to Israel and Judah? He looked at, at Israel and said, I'm going I'm to do you based on what I've done to you. Have you false God? You had it. I'm going to take care of you. 1948. If you read the history on it, Israel, the enemy of that I owned that didn't even know. 
God made a way for Israel to be back. Be back in Jerusalem. In their own homeland. God made a way. And they're, they're coming back over there. They're from, from all parts of Russia, all parts of the world. They're coming back. Amen. When you start threatening Jerusalem, you can read it all through the Bible. Amen. When they rise up in the east, and, and who's in the east? Who's farther in the east we're afraid of now? It's called all kinds of trouble. China. Called China. You can't go to stores, you don't tell, especially through all Walmart. You can't buy them but heart and hyper tough. Johnny's made, you know, tools, all this. He poured it into here. Well, guess what? President, we got now, he opened up that pipeline where they can sell make billions of dollars from into Germany mm -hmm. and into, over into the NATO nation. He shut down the Keystone and opened that up for food. Yeah. And you'll say, well, I have news. Well, yeah, it tells me what's falling, the nations is rising up. Because the Bible actually speaks of that. They'll start rising up. I'm not talking about the pipeline, but I'm talking about the nations rising up and coming against our religious beliefs. What we taught in school years goes not good now. They're taught that we're a Marxist country, that we are a racist country. Yeah, white people, did you ever thought that white people are the bad people now? We are the racist. White people think they're better than everybody else. Well, I don't think that, but I know the Constitution was all white people. I didn't see any other color, but that wasn't me. You know, the Constitution was written. They don't take it as it is, biblically, between man and woman. Married between man and woman. Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. It don't work. It don't work. It would be nobody. They can't produce. But God's going to be their judge. God's going to be their judge. My family's hard on me because a few of them in my family. You know about them. I love them. I don't beat them to death with it all the time. I got a boy the Lord's working hard on. I hope. He tells me. I preached to him one time about, about Ira. He couldn't get away from me. He when I was younger. I ripped him up, but I wasn't. I was too old. <laughs> but he was scared anyway. He had to sit down and listen to me. He said, Daddy, I've done too much and too far. I can't be saved. I said, have you blasphemed his Holy Ghost? I said, this now. And have you blasphemed me? He didn't know what it was. I explained it to him. He said, I could. He said, no, Dad. I said, you got hope. I said, they nothing can stop you. I said, you never forget the words that I have told you. I said, Daddy, you understand these. I'll not always be here, but I want to ring in your ear, son. I want you to know these things. Daddy, I know. I know, Daddy. I, I, I understand. And you know what? God's working with him still to this day. Even to the day when he calls, he's got a soft voice. Amen. He's got a soft voice. Even the guy that's out there with him, they all treat me with respect. Because when they walk in, I don't hide from people. I don't look around. They ask me after what you think about this world, these gays and all this transgender. I said, they're full of the devil. That's exactly what it is. It's loose, pretty, they can lock me up, they can mash my mouth, do whatever they want to do. But I'm going to stand for righteousness because you're coming up on the judgment. You're going to give an account for what deeds you've done in this body, what you stand for or not. Even your family, but not only how you carried yourself when you was out. You know, I don't take these off to go to the store. We go down to the doctor. Well, I talk to the. I got a doctor, Doctor Dave down why? I go in there and his, his mother. They ain't doctor. You do doctor. I think a lot of that. We not old. But I think a lot of that. His mother is a Jesus woman. You'll find me there, do you? No. I've got priest to him. What was it? Oh, I've done it. Friday. Friday. That's her Medicare visit. She doesn't think you got to have it. I got a priest to him down there. And he's enjoyed the priest too because he believes it too. But he can't say too much because he's a doctor. You know, there's a lot of people around him. You know what I'm saying? They they run him out of the business. They said, down there. He looked at me. He talked to me. He said, I know. I know. I tell him about you. I said, he's coming. I looked at him. I said, Brother Dave, you, you need to change. I said, you need to change. Because he's bought the credit. He's not. But he knows. I said, you need to change. You see where we're in to. He said, I, I know it. I know it. And I know it. I said, if you don't, why don't you do something about it? Brother, I ain't got no excuse. I can't answer that. But I'm telling you, you'll find me people's wife there. And he, he, he's a good you're a moral person. He farts his talk to him. But I tell you, I love all people. I, I hate to see anybody. There's some people you can't even talk to, though. They're just far, you say, well, they're too far. Why well, not for God? But they are for us. So it takes somebody else to move in their life, basically. That's you know, just the way it is. And I like this part. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Think about that. We say that a lot. But well, what does it mean? Endure means stand when it's not kosher. When they curse you, they call you names. They make fun of you. They mock you. They only imprison you. We're not going to get away with it. Tell me. Yeah. If I live long enough, I, I'll probably see a lot of it. If I live long enough, I'm starting to get up in age two. But a lot of young people, these people right here, these young kids right here, is growing up and anchored where you're teaching right and wrong. 
They may just go to the group medical site down the street about 10 weeks away. They may see it for you. No. They'll see Terrell Tate. That's really it's important when they get up and they read that Bible. We know it's money, but they're trying to get through it. They're trying to remember. To uplift them. That's a blessing to me. That's a blessing to me. Anybody all over there you do is I don't want to hear that junk. You're you're walking on the fight side of me. <laughs> Not really. I mean spiritually. I look at you and tell you, no. God says suffer with children come unto me. Amen. But y'all pray for me. I enjoy you. I love you. Love you. Stephanie, the prior work waned down a little bit. I had to be careful.